to change the angle of this camera, so bear with me a little bit. I've just got this light resting on top of it. Really poor setup today. Uh, is that all right? See my tree? Undecorated. If anyone is here, do say hi, by the way. Tree is undecorated, but I mean, it's up and it's got lights on it. And I think it's so pretty, actually. I never really feel like decorating because it's so pretty. It's got these little frosted, glittery tips, which I love. So um, yeah, giving you some Christmassy vibes. I've uh, got samples everywhere. Let me know if you're here, say hi. Ah, uh, the Pacific is here, it says hi, it's been a while. Hello, nice to see you. Yes, now I can relax. I think this angle is still wrong. Um, I, it is, isn't it, because you've got, I don't know how much, like officially, what's the right gap between head and, it just feels like the camera needs to angle down a little bit, but that's gonna be difficult because of this lights on top. And that also the fact that I just couldn't get, put everything together properly how I wanted it. I'm going to it down if I can. I don't know that's <coughs> I've also got a cold. Just getting over the worst of a cold. So, sorry if there's going to be coughing and sniffing. I know they are unbearable to hear other people, especially sniffing. And I have got a tissue, so we try not to sniff too much. Sometimes it just you just can't help it though, can you? So, luckily, I still have my sense of smell. It might not be as... Uh, precise as it would normally be. I say precise, but you know what I mean, as sharp. It might be dulled down. I can't really tell. I am wearing perfume today. I've been able to smell it, I'd say, most of the day. So I'm going to give you my scent of the day. Let me know what you're wearing. Hey, John, by the way, I just saw you saying hi. Uh, it says evening. Oh, and Kareen is here as well. Nice to see Kareen. Um, so yeah, scent of the day today has been, I've not worn this for a little while actually, and it's Liz Abstray's Belle Am, but I didn't just wear this, I wore this over the top of my Unspoken Musk Body Oil, because I feel like they are a perfect match, I think Corinne will agree with me, I know she likes both, and so I wore the body oil, and then I wore this, but then, because that wasn't enough, I did one spray, once that had dried off the first perfume, Belle Am, I did one spray. I thought I'd add, add some rose to the mix. I dreamed of a rose from Juliet perfumes. Juliet rose perfumes, should I say. I did one spray here. And honestly, if the combination's been really strange. I think that the rose has, has met up with some of the Belam, although I thought I sprayed them in different places. And I've been getting almost an oody patchouli sort of rose scent all day. A bit Francis Kirk de Jean, Velvet, Rose Oud, or one of those Rose Ouds. So really nice, but just not what I expected. I dreamed of a rose on its own, doesn't smell like that, and uh, Belle Am doesn't smell like that on its own. So they must have mixed in together and given me this uh, sort of oudy, opulent, dark, mysterious rose today, which has been good. It's been very good. And... Who else do we have here? So we also have LB, Lizzie, Rose and Jones in the house. The tree looks pretty, thank you very much. And um, we've got John, uh, aka We Are Sentient. And uh, yeah, Karine says love Bell Am too. And also Valentina's here, number five extra for Valentina. Uh, Valentina has extraordinary taste. So nice to see you, V. Do you mind if I call you V? I call you V in my head. I never dared to text it to you. <laughs> Do other people call you V? Let me know. Uh, Dreams of a rose would be a nice sweater weather type rose, soft and musky. I get what you like it, says Lizzie. Yeah, I'm really loving it. I can't wait to get my next rose from Julia Rose. I'm thinking maybe after Christmas, see if there's a... There's, she often does little sales, 10, 15, 20% off. So I will have a look after Christmas and see if I can get a little deal. Not that, I mean, it's not that it's expensive anyway, but I'm... <laughs> Always after saving pennies. Hey, Desan, lovely to see you. Like the stream for the team, yes, please. Uh, cheers, um, cheers, everyone. I've just got a tiny bit of Prosecco because I opened a bottle yesterday and I thought I left a bit more in the bottle than this, but yeah, this is it. So, first drink of the night, Prosecco, and I have got a little bit of gin down by my feet just in case. Mm. 
I got into Prosecco in Italy and um, I've got, I've had a, a stockpile of bottles of Prosecco in my cupboard and I think it's from when you do those meal deals, whether it's the Tesco's finest or Marks and Spencer's, you get those meal deals where you buy a main, a dessert, maybe a oh, side or a starter and a bottle of wine or a box of chocolates, whatever. And um, I think I stockpiled my Prosecco from there, from those things. So I've opened a few bottles lately because <laughs> I got into it, as I say, I really enjoyed it in Italy. Uh, Scent of the day for Dusan is Amouage Overture Man. I have an Amouage here that we're going to talk about in a minute. I've got Amouage Fake that John sent me. I didn't actually mention this to you, John, I don't think. I don't know if I sent you a message about it. I really, I really enjoy it. It's uh, very vintagey smelling, but really nice fragrance. Uh, Ty says hi, uh, Sandra B says hello everyone. And scent of the day, Gerland B said to Rusi, very nice. Discontinued now, isn't it? I think uh, we are. We are. John says in half. I'm half Naomi Good said Corpus Equis Equis. I don't know how to say it. And BDK's Jasmine Wood named as so badly as it's the Cherry Woods. Dusan says no wine for me tonight. This cognac scent on my neck is pretty strong. And uh, Ty is wearing. Obsession and new and you. Not sure about that one. Um, I'm gonna have to keep. I'm gonna have to keep drinking because my throat's gonna dry out. Oh. I've had quite. I had a bit of a late nap today. Not that I regularly nap, but I just. I finished night shifts. Where are we today? Two days ago. I finished working Monday morning about half six, and then I really struggled to get back into days. And then, so, yeah, I felt really tired today and I got my eyebrows, I got my eyebrows tattooed today and it was quite hardcore. I was a model for a student at a training college just up the road from me, so you can get stuff done really cheap, but obviously the student doing it. And so she, I think she did a really great job, but it took time and it got quite painful because when you use the numbing cream, you have to wipe it off really well before you start inking because the numbing cream would stop the ink from penetrating but unfortunately just because obviously she was a student it was a bit slower than it probably would normally be and then um, the numbing cream wore off and it was a little bit hellish for the last half an hour or longer it was kind of um yeah, it was hard <laughs> So I really felt when I got back, I felt like I'd been in the wars and I, I actually needed just to get in my bed and, just, and relax and I ended up having a little sleep. So I thought as I woke up and I felt a bit light, once I actually managed to get back out of bed, which was difficult, once I actually got up, I thought, I need to do, I need to either make a video or do a live stream. So here we go, my f bloody throat though. <coughs> That's the only problem. Obviously getting your eyebrows done, you mostly sit there with your gob shut, so I haven't really had to talk. Now here I am talking more in this first 10 minutes than I've spoken in days. <laughs> and it's, yeah, it's hard, but here we go. Right, we've got a lot of chatting going on here. Uh, someone who's that? Um, the Pacific's wearing Cartier's Le Promis. And what would you do is wearing witchy woo from Vi Vireo. I haven't heard of that one. A base of Rissi is not discontinued. Still available in some girl and shops in Paris via the fountain system. Okay, I didn't know that. That is the one that's sort of like cranberry or red fruit. I think I had a sample of it, if it's the one I'm thinking of. Yeah, uh, let me know. I think I think I, I did at least have a small sample of it. It's very nice, musky, red fruit. Slightly sweet, but not too sweet. A little bit of tartness to it. And Lizzie says, I sprayed Kiss of Bliss this evening. I'll be waiting with a drum roll to see what you think of that one. Okay. Um, I don't know, what, should we just start with that one? Ty says, new but YSL. Okay, hockey puck bottle. I'm layering it with everything else. I own as usual. And Lily is here as well. For all, no, it's nice to see you. Dropping by to wish everyone a merry holidays. Looking lovely, Claire. Love the festive setting. Thank you, Lily. It's lovely to see you. And an untouchable just ordered. Montel's Mukalat. Have you tried this? Yes, uh, I remember having a small one of those tiny little bottles 
very sweet, reminded me of childhood toys and rubbers. You know, when, when I say rubbers, I'm English, <laughs> I mean erasers. Uh, you know the ones, if you were lucky and your parents were willing to splash out, you could get a scented rubber that smelt like fruits. Fruits and vanilla and stuff like that. It reminded me of all of those things. It was kind of a nostalgic scent. Sandra says, yes, it's cranberry, plum and absinthe. Okay, yeah, no, I remember it, it's nice. Uh, did someone say Jimbo's here? Yes, Jimbo's here. Happy Tuesday, bean sprayers. Hey, Jimbo. Um, okay. Right, shall we just spray the one that Lizzie just mentioned that she's wearing? So, Lizzie's samples are in here. Let's just get into it. And, did you say liquid? Kiss of Bliss, there we are, Kiss of Bliss. Okay, I, I don't know what to expect because Lizzie has kind of said that she's not expecting me to like re really any of these. Um, so we're just gonna see. So none of these will go directly on my skin until they've been checked. I need more Prosecco, I wish I had more Prosecco. I think I've got another bottle, but it's not in the fridge. Because my throat's so dry, I just gotta keep drinking. So, I mean, this could get messy, couldn't it? Okay, here we go. It's definitely not um, offensive. It's quite nice. Uh, I'm wondering if something's gonna come out that um, I won't like. It's definitely, I, I guess you probably think I'm not gonna like it because it's, it doesn't smell particularly natural. It smells like, I don't even know, who's this by? Oh, this is a Penhaligon's one, okay. <clears throat> My bloody throat. It smells like E4 Malto. So, uh, Backward Rouge 540 candy floss, basically. It smells like a little bit like candy floss. Maybe with a hint of patchouli. A little bit of spice. I'd say it's, it's like, or even uh, Prada candy. So it's like that, but it's like a light version. More like Prada candy than Baccarat Rouge. So, yeah, it smells sugary. It smells like sugar, it smells like candy floss, it smells like there's a little deepness, a little spiciness. The thing is, Dusan, I know you said um, test on skin. Problem is I've got a lot here to get through, so what I wanna do is do them all on paper first, Anything that I really like, then I'll chuck it on my skin. Both arms are fairly free, but obviously there's a lot here, so I'd rather do paper first, and then I will go back and test a few things on skin, I promise. Liz says, no, honestly, none of that bad. I can only get better if you assume to dislike them all. And Corinne says, I prefer rum when I'm coughing, or Krupnik. I don't know what that is. Um, I made myself an amazing soup with uh, the, the craziest, hottest chilli that I have ever used in cooking. I'm not a big cooker anyway, but usually I'll buy a bag of chilies, basic chilies from the supermarket, and they're normally not that hot. I might put three, four or five in a, a meal, or, you know, like a, a big bowl of soup. Not one bowl, but like a big batch of soup. Luckily, I tried this chilli first. My God. Cut a tiny bit off, put it in my mouth. I didn't even chew. It just started burning, even the skin of the chilli, not like the flesh. Just started burning my lips and my tongue immediately. And I thought, shit, I am not putting all of these chilies in this soup. I put one chili in a big batch of soup that made about 10 bowls. And it was too, uh, it was a bit too hot. My friend had some and she said her eyes were steaming, her eyes were streaming, her nose was streaming. <laughs> it's a bit much. Um, but I felt like I put all the things in it that make you better. So I just kept on eating it. Lizzie says, I always do paper first, I can't have offensive scent on skin in case I'm stuck with it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Valentina says, love your nails. Thank you. But it's, uh, it's called Conquer. It's just worn away at the one end there. I only did it a couple of days ago. But yeah, it's called Conquer. I thought it'd be a bit bit more um, autumnal slash wintery. So I always like, generally like pale things. I'm going to have to pour myself immediately another drink because otherwise... I'm gonna cough a lot. 
Smurfy, so Smurfy cough a lot. So we've got some Bloomagin. Straight into the Prosecco glass. <laughs> you know, we're not, we're not um, professional gin slash Prosecco connoisseurs, are we? So it's okay. But you know, I just got to keep my, got to keep myself lubricated. Sorry for the lighting. I know it's not brilliant, but you can see me, can't you? And you can see the tree, that's the main thing. So let's go back to Kiss from a Bliss, or whatever it is, Bliss from a Kiss, Bliss of Kiss, Kiss of Bliss. Yeah, Lizzie, um, tell me the notes if you know them. Tell me if I'm right. I feel like there's quite a lot of things in here that are in, that are in Baccarat Rouge, but not so much the woody, dry aroma chemicals, but rather the the spiciness, so maybe some saffron, maybe some patchouli, um, sugar, maybe some vanilla. That's mostly what I get from it. So it's it's perfectly nice, it doesn't excite me, it makes me think of Prada Candy, Baccarat Rouge, is that ballpark, but it's not it's not really that Baccarat Rougey though. I mean Baccarat Rouge is all about those sort of like dry, sweet, woody ambers, and I don't think that's what this is all about. But it is a bit of an ethyl maltol type smell to me. So that candy floss type smell. And yeah, so that is Bliss of Kiss, Kiss of Bliss, Kiss of Bliss, 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 Kiss, Kiss, Kiss. So yeah, that, that one's perfectly pleasant. And let's just move on with the next of the Penhaligans. Let's see, what do we have? Liquid Love, good name, like it. I wonder what Liquid Love means. Ben Halligan says, musk, jasmine and clover. Okay, well, nothing, <laughs> nothing that I uh, said there then. Uh, clover, heliotrope, matcha tea, rose, jasmine, musk. Okay, um, well, uh, I didn't pick up on any of those. So, uh, what do you think though, Liz? Does, uh, do you find it sugary? Um, yeah, let me know. Uh, have you got bottles of all of these? Have you, as you've sent me samples, does that mean you've got bottles of all of these? And uh, Lizzie says, I had to quickly look my, um, Suzanne says, I need Tralala, Tralala, Tralala from Penn Halligans. I can't remember that one. Or do I? I'm not sure. Right, so this one's Liquid Love. And it's fruity. Uh, I think it's a fruity patchouli. Maybe. When I first sprayed it, it felt like there was quite a lot of patchouli and all of a sudden it's not, I don't know if it's patchouli or not now. It's a musky, fruity, what sort of fruit? <sighs> Greenish, almost like a cucumbery type green wateriness in here. Quite, yeah, sort of fresh, but not really, really fresh. Like a fruit salad that's almost a mixture of sweet fruits and some savoury stuff like cucumbers. And I don't know what else. Um, and maybe a little bit of patchouli as well. Quite nice, quite fresh. Uh, Liz has got a bottles of Liquid Love, Kiss of Bliss, and Vavavroom. Yeah. Um, what are the notes of this one, Liz? If you know. It's reminding, no, it's rose, isn't it? There's rose in here. It's like a green rose. Yeah, it's quite rosy and maybe some geranium. Because you get that, geranium smells to me like a really sharp rose, basically. Um, uh, I find liquid love almost slightly vegetal. Yes, that's exactly what I get from it and slightly spicy rose. A bit like that, oh, what's that bottle? You know that bottle that's got the big, um, down the, in the centre of it, black and white, where the sprayer would be, but it's like a thick, it's a famous, like, well-loved rose and cannabis scent. Yeah. Yeah, I totally get that. Um, it's a green, sort of vegetal rose. But I did feel like there was some fruits in here as well. And then something a little darker and musty that makes me think of patchouli, patchouli and musk, something like that. 
So it's not mega fresh, but it's not not fresh. It's like a bit fresh. But there is like something muddy in the water a little bit. Uh, like slightly earthy or something. But perfectly pleasant. <laughs> Sorry, I don't hate it. <coughs> I don't hate it. Um... I don't think what that fragrance was. Flora Botanica, thank you, Ty. Yeah. Yes, that's it. Flora Botanica. It reminds me of that. And Jim says, yes, Ty. I thought it reminds me of something. Yeah, it makes me think of Flora Botanica. Okay, next. Uh, va va voom. So when you say when you say I say va va voom, but this is va va voom. Is that what a car does? What does it, what does forever have room? No patchouli apparently, but musky and sandalwood and hazelnut. Okay, that makes sense. I think that might be giving it that earthy sort of tone. Forever have room. Forever have room. I can't say it. I would rather say forever have room. That just comes more naturally to me. Right then, let's see. What do we have here? Definitely something metallic. Um... Yeah, quite a tingly, cold, icy cold metallic note. I don't know what would cause that, but if you think about the metallic note in uh, Platinum Egg some men's fragrances have this um, metallic, almost like coins, smell of coins. You know, if you handle coins, and your hand sort of has that like, stink of that metallic-y smell, a little bit like that. There's, there's quite floral and sweet as well. Um, it's reminding me of something very citrusy. It's making me think of a Creed fragrance, I think. I'm not a specific one, but just the general citrusiness that Creed can do. Yeah, it's very citrusy green. So, potentially, I'm thinking Neroli and Pettigrain. Not so metallic now, but still very icy. It's definitely icy cold. It's definitely quite fresh. Quite natural, much more natural than the last two because I smell a lot. I smell a lot of citrus here. Uh, weird name, but apparently Vava Voom is a shade of yellow. So maybe the name has come from that. It's Osmanthus apricot, but with that cumin vibe that you really love. No, I hate cumin, but I'm not picking it up here yet. At all. I'm getting fig. Are you sure there's not fig in here? Yeah, dehydro I don't think it's dehydromersonol. I, I, I'm not a fan of that at all, but I, I'm, I kind of find that earthy and green and almost mold, moldy water-like scent, I find, from dehydromersonol. Um, <clears throat> no cumin. It's the leather giving an animatic touch. I think I'm, the reason I'm thinking of Creed is to, it smells like the fig one, Jardin de Malfi. I think I smell fig. If it's not listed, I don't care. It's, it smells like a fig fragrance. I know you said it's Osmanthus. Maybe that's the Osmanthus. It smells like fig to me. Um, I'm not picking up on the leather or anything animalic right now, but um, maybe my nose isn't working properly. Oh, thank you, Mark. That's very kind of you. Hey, Mark. Yeah, this reminds me a little bit of Jardin de Malfi, a little bit of uh, Dolce and Cabana's light blue. So a very natural citrus fig fragrance. That's what I get. Uh, Ty says leather can smell like pennies sometimes. Bronze leather by Joe Malone does, it, in my opinion. Yeah, I seem to have lost that sharp metallicness almost immediately. It's still sharp and fresh. But more coming from, it feels like it's just coming from a citrus blend. Like um, bergamot, maybe neroli, maybe pettigrain, but more lemony probably. More on the lemony side, bergamot, lemon, with this touch of what's probably osmanthus, but smells a bit like fig to me. Uh, citrus, magnolia, and broxen, and sage. Yeah, it does have a little green 
herbal element to it. I would never have said sage specifically because I'm not brilliant at herbs. Um, and Gabby's here as well. Nice to see you, Gabby. Honestly, I think this is a very nice, natural smelling fragrance. But as I say, it does remind me of other things. And it's not, yeah, it's not, it doesn't smell particularly unique. Uh, but I'd say that's probably the one I like the best out of the three so far. Let's just lubricate a little bit. So then what do we have next? I've got, oh, we've got that. Okay, so that is it for the Penhaligons. We've got the Super Parfums de Mali, Al Fair. Um, I don't know too much about this, but I think it's maybe been a little bit hyped. And yeah, um, I have no clue what this is going to be like because occasionally I can like a parfum de Mali, and then often I often I think that they're fine. I just think they're very overpriced, and then sometimes I think that some of them are shit. So yeah, that's <coughs> <coughs> excuse me, what? Um, we'll let that settle on the paper just for a second. Uh, Liz says, if I have room white lovey on my skin, shame it disappears on you, Jim. It's a long wear on me. So uh, there we go. There we go. Right. I will, maybe I'll try that one on my skin because that, there's nothing offensive about it at all. It's very pleasant. Okay, Althair. Uh, Ty says, Althair is nice, not worth the price. Gabby's wearing the Le de Desert Mail Dog Gain off of Tower. Okay, I am getting a, an orangey amber, powdery, resinous, not unpleasant. It's quite pleasant actually, so far. <laughs> Listen, some PDM are shite, I do agree, although I do love a good handful of them. It smells a bit like a chocolate orange if you dried it out and powdered it up. Uh, Jimbo says, uh, Balm of Calm was the one that lasted the longest on him and the one he liked the least, of course. I have a feeling this is a bit of a beast. It smells like it's got some of those dry woody ambers in it that would keep it sticking on your skin forever. Um... Lizzie said, I got a weird burnt orange blossom from Althair, but I love the vanilla dry down. Gabby says, I have a confession to make. Go for it, Gabby. This one, I was talking about Baccarat Rouge 540 earlier, and we were talking about the candy floss note in it. Now I feel like with Althair, we don't have the candy floss note, but we have some of those sweet woody ambers, like those sweetened wood type scent. I feel like there's something of a Baccarat Rouge feel about this one, but not in the same way as the other one. I have a feeling that this, uh, I can start to smell some of those, more of those sweet woody, almost smoky woody ambers. I don't think it's harsh, but I have a feeling it would get on my nerves. And I have a feeling it's never gonna go away. I, th I think I smell some patchouli as well now. It definitely has a bit of a chocolatey feel, which could be a patchouli. Thanks, Gabby. <laughs> Conquer. <laughs> Did my toes as well, not that anyone's going to see them. Um, Lucy says, not sure it's worthy of fragrance of the year. Oh, did they get fragrance of the year for this? Well, you know, who knows what goes on behind closed doors? <laughs> um, yeah, this, uh, anyone got the notes? This, this smells like a slightly smoky, orangey, woody, powdery, amber scent with a little bit of patchouli in it and musk. And uh, something, you know the, the sweet woody smell that's in By the Fireside? I think it's got that in it. There's an aroma chemical. I pick it up in quite a lot of fragrances that are usually smoky woody amber so there's definitely an aroma chemical that's in by the fireside that's also in a few other things and i think it's in here as well so perfectly pleasant 
not something I personally would buy because it's just not my taste these days. Even though I think it smells good, if someone walked past me wearing this, I'd go, well, they smell nice, they smell niche. Like they're, they're not just wearing, you know, Bleu de Chanel or whatever. You, you'd be able to sort of sense that they're wearing something a little more unusual. But it's quite sweet. I don't know if the, if, who's going crazy for this, the girls or the boys at the moment. I have a feeling, it's kind of in between, but I have a feeling girls would like it more. Ty says, I feel like everyone could wear this without any problem unless you have an aversion to amber woody vanillas. Yeah. Um, uh, Liz says, yes, I think you're right. There's there definitely a by the fireplace touch to it. Yeah, I, perfectly pleasant. If I wore it, I'd, I'd feel confident I smelt good, but I have a feeling it, it would start to get on my tits after a couple of hours. And it's just that some of those woody ambers, they just do that to me. They sort of drag me down a little bit. So, um, but it's definitely not really scratchy. It doesn't feel like it has any of the really harsh aroma chemicals, the ones that I particularly hate, the amber mats, amber extreme and all of that sort of stuff. If they're in there, then they're, they're kept in check. So actually not bad at all. Okay, so I've got one more from Lizzie. Starlight from Zerzhov. I don't know anything about this. So um, let's do that. We'll let that settle for a second. Back to work for me, says Mark. Enjoy the stream, everyone. Thank you, Mark. Thanks for popping in. And Karine says, there's something in Parfum de Miley fragrances that doesn't work for me. I don't know why. I guess they're just not for me. It's, there, there's definitely things about certain brands that, you know, they just don't gel with you. Um, I mean, I can't get on with the the Penhaligon's is it the portraits, the ones with, <laughs> with the lids. <laughs> I find them all really heavy with all the aroma chemicals that I really don't get on with. But the original line uh, uh, generally are okay, although some... They do seem to be really tending towards aroma chemicals of the dry, scratchy uh, variety these days, which is a shame. Uh, but there's, but some of their earlier fragrances are, are really uh, outstandingly good. Um, Gabby says, just popped in to touch base early to start at Salon Night all night. Night, Gabby. Ty says, want to try more Zershoffs, see what the fuss is about. Lizzie says, bloody obsessed with this one. Love the cardamom is starlight. Okay, right, let's. Oh yes, I see what you're saying. It's very much cardamom. Powdery and musky. The seat's not very comfortable. I got this new sofa a little while ago. It's a, um, it's, it sort of folds down into a bed as well, just in case anyone was ever to stay over here. <laughs> Fortunately, it doesn't happen. Um, but you know, it's there if, if an emergency was to occur. Um, but then it's also sort of somewhere for me to hang out in this, this area of the house because there wasn't a comfortable seat out here. And this is comfortable if I lay on it and put my feet up, but sitting on it, not so much. It's fine, it's just, um, I don't like keeping my legs on the floor, I always like my legs up. Anyway, that's too much information. Yeah, this is probably too much cardamom for me. It's very spicy, but yeah, mostly I think it's just spicy from the cardamom. It's got a really delicate, I don't know what it is, it's got a really delicate feel to it. Like there's touches of something here that's very gentle and subtle and lovely. I can see we like it. Musky, I don't know what's in here, whether there's iris, whether, whether it's musk, powdery sort of notes, but very gentle, very subtly nuanced which I really like um, <laughs> Lizzie says an opportunist spare bed you're hilarious <laughs> it's quite resinous but it's very nicely done says Lizzie yeah it's it's really gentle is there is there a tiny bit of rose or something in here I don't know or a sandalwood it's lovely, it's difficult to, 
explain except I just feel like there's layers of mist and powder and dust and subtle nuance it just give it this magical airy feeling which I like even though cardamom is not my favourite note I mean I don't dislike cardamom but I generally don't veer towards cardamom centric fragrances I prefer the cardamom to maybe be kept in a lower dose although I know it's a very much loved scent I think I find cardamom a tiny bit sickly I think that's what it is for some reason don't you hate it you know when you eat in um if you get a microwave curry and rice and then you accidentally like you're eating and then you suddenly bite on something hard and perfumey and you've bit you've been chewing on a cardamom pod it's so annoying isn't it have i tried iris says valentina yes i got um a decant upstairs <coughs> i I find it quite perfumey. I haven't smelt it for a long time. I found it very floral. Maybe the to me the florals, the florals were stronger than the iris, which I didn't expect from it. I, was, I don't know if they were. I don't know what florals they are in there, but they're quite intense and perfumey, and probably not. It wasn't quite what I expected. But I will go and retry it now, um, Valentine. I take it you you know that one quite well, do you? I've got a drink. Ugh. Uh, Lizzie doesn't know the note. Oh, hang on. Uh, almond, amber, cloves, cinnamon, no florals. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I think for me, the cardamom's very, very much the main player, but I love the delicate powdery, subtle nuances that play around it. So yeah, that's very nice. Uh, what's should I try the figgy one on skin? What's the the vav vav room? Vav vav room says I know. Do someone wants me to try some on skin? So we'll do the citrusy one that I think smells figgy, but is in fact osmanthus. Because I might get something else from it on the skin. Um. <laughs> yeah, Liz says me and Jim are on the notes game tonight. Yeah, there we go. Jim's got the notes as well. Cardamom, bergamot, cinnamon, almond, amber, cedarwood. And uh, now I was going to, so this is uh, Valentina. I was going to buy a sample of Iris, but I had to cancel my order as their customer service was no good. Oh, that's no good. I know you won't let me, but I can send you a sample, Valentina. Um, but talk to, talk to me later. We'll, we'll, sort some, we'll, we'll sort something out that you're happy with. Um, Jim says, if you both like it, I need to check it out. Um, check it out, if you like cardamom, check it out, if you're not a big fan of cardamom, there's not really much point. <laughs> oh yeah, this, this, <coughs> um, va va broom, definitely smells figgy to me, um, citrus and fig, it make, it does make me think of Dolce & Gabbana's like blue, Jardin de Malfi from Creed. Uh, like it's maybe even got a tea note in it. Uh, quite natural smelling for for Penhaligons these days. That's, that's unusual. Um, so I'll give it that. But it smells it smells like things that you've smelled before. So well, you know, it can change. It can change. So I wanted to talk about a few that John sent me. So. I, um, let's talk about the one that I fell in love with, that I was amazed by. I won't talk about all the ones John sent me, but a few of them. So John sent me this one. If you Are you here, John? I've emptied it because I liked it so much. The mystery scent. John sent me a mystery scent. And it's from, is it Mio Fushini? And it's a violet one. It's called Violet something. Um, if anyone knows. Oh, you are here, John. John, what is it that the one, the mystery scent? Uh, Mio, is it Mio Fischini Violet something? It's, it smells irisy. I don't think, there, was there actually any iris note listed? I don't know. But to me, it smelled very irisy. I really like it. Um, as I've emptied it, so I can't spray it. But it smelled like 
layers of iris and violet, maybe even violet leaf, but not too much, like it's not too green. It's quite cold and cool though. Um, so it's, it's, I mean, it's stunningly heartbreakingly, you know when people say something's heartbreakingly beautiful? And I would say that about this because, because it is so cool, so austere, so, so much like a sad story. Uh, and that's supposed to be about the uh, spring, is it the beginning of spring when the violets first spring? Uh, I can't remember, I'm butchering the, the third hand story that John told me. So um, I don't know too much about it, but <laughs> uh, Karine says, oh, you make me want to try this one. It is beautiful. I think if you like the girl and violets, if you like Apre Londe, in particular, if you like Apre Londe, not so much Le Bleu, but sort of, um, then I think you're going to like this. But it's like Apre Londe, but str a lot stronger. Um, Lizzie says, yes, it's heartbreakingly beautiful, cold and melancholic. I've been dreaming of a bottle of this, but not before Christmas now. I don't know if it's too cold, almost too sad for me, because I do like my fragrances kind of warm and approachable. I'd say most of my fragrances are quite, generally quite warm. Um, this feels, this is like, stay away i'm the ice queen kind of fragrance but it is beautiful it's blue and it's violet in color and it's icy and it's ethereal and it's layers of of texture but they're all delicate and like silk and taffeta um it's gauzy it's lovely it's so so nice and for john this was a blind ball a hundred mil oh it's x-ray and i have to say it is really, really nice. Uh, Karine says, my favourite violet is violet chopped so far. Who's the dealer to buy a sample from that? From this Mio Fushini. Um, I think John, John, did you get it from a, a, some European uh, website? But I don't think you can get samples or the sample set is really expensive i think john was saying john if you're selling decants let me know <laughs> let me and, and valentina know uh do senses apre londe equals low diva i can't really remember low diva now although i definitely have tried it yeah so this one's lovely the mio fushini um i can't remember the the violet one <laughs> it's got the word violet in it Oh, is Angie here? I didn't even see Angie post. Must is Angie here? Fifty cents UK. Oh no no no. Okay, that's the name of the website. Oh, duh. <laughs> um, right. The website that John bought it from is fifty cents, and the sample set is a fortune. Fifty mil dot com. It's the cheapest website so far. Okay, thank you, Liz. Ty says, my favourite violet is angel violet because it reminds me of palmer violets with the plastic in there too, aka where my violet journey started. I've loved, I only ate but, uh, palmer violets the other night. I've managed to sniff some out when I was at work. So when you're at work overnight, you have to go on the prowl and look around for sweets and snacks. Sometimes you can be lucky. Um. <laughs> John says, screw selling it. If you both want more, I'll send it to Claire. Um, uh, okay, right. Now, let's talk about... Uh, I'm not going to talk about the olfactive O's. So John sent me two olfactive O's. It's not, not really my thing. So I don't want to dwell on them too much. I will just quickly tell you, so the citrusy, olfactive, oh, the citrusy one actually reminds me of Vava Vroom. It's in that same ballpark as reminding me of a figgy citrusy type fragrance, a bit like Dolce & Gabbana's Light Blue, Jardin de Malfi. Again, I, I, we're only talking ballpark. Um, so, yeah, that was olfactive, oh, the citrusy. 
the other one I really didn't like, uh, Amber, but I mean, it just, <coughs> um, it's just not my thing, you know, they just, there's certain aroma chemicals I just don't get on with. And I like fragrances to have something in them that smells natural, even if it's not natural. I don't mind if the fragrance is 100% synthetic, but it's not bad. It's just, it's actually better than I remember. But it just has these, it may be that, that same aroma chemical by the fireside one, that sweet woody amber but a much greater dose than the one that I smelled it in earlier. And some other dry, sweet, woody aroma chemicals. Um, so yeah, I won't dwell on it, it's just not my, it's not my cup of tea, but someone else was wearing it, walked past me, they, I'd definitely say they smelled good. I probably wouldn't want to hang out with them all day though. <laughs> I might start to get a bit annoyed with it. <coughs> Um, Corinne says, have you tried Iris Medici's Intense? No, I need to try that one. Is it quite green though, Corinne? Because I really don't. A lot of um, Iris perfumes and even violet perfumes, they tend to make them green or put violet leaf in them or, or you know, something green in them. And then that kind of ruins it for me. Like, don't put galbanum. Please don't put galbanum in anything. Perfume, if any perfumers are watching this, don't put galbanum in anything. All that hydro de mercenal that Dusan mentioned earlier, just don't, don't use that stuff. <laughs> um, right, my, my bum, do you know what my bum's aching? It's because I'm sitting on the edge of this seat. Maybe if I sit back a bit, hopefully the, that doesn't upset the volume. Right, so we're going to do amouage, oh no, no that's not amouage, we're going to do I bet I've moved it somewhere else because I liked it. I didn't particularly get on with the Amourage Interlude Woman, but maybe people will be interested anyway for me to smell it. So uh, let's smell it. Uh, I find interlude, the Interlude Man is obnoxiously loud. Um, let's move you a little closer. Yeah, Interlude Man is obnoxiously loud and just unbearable. The woman's nice, it's a bit, um, actually, it's like, it's peppermint. I smell peppermint powder. It's like, it's like a box of menthol cigarettes. Papery, minty, powdery. I never got that the first time I smelled this. Um, John says, Interlude Woman is an absolutely mental fragrance of all sorts of things. Dusan says, Interlude Woman is brilliant. Uh, Kareen says, talking about the iris from Nikolai, I have some greenness from it, uh, leaning slightly leathery, I guess. There is galbanum because it reminds me of Chanel fragrances somehow. Yeah, I probably wouldn't like it, although I will smell every fragrance with, with iris as a main character just to be sure, you know, because I love Iris. <clears throat> okay, minty, really still minty. Literally like peppermint chewing gum, but powdery and papery. So different to the first time I sniffed it, although I can't really, I've, I thought it was more resiny, ambery the first time I tried it. Okay, Dusan, I will put this on my skin. <laughs> if I can find it again. Where did we put it? <laughs> right, that's the one I'm going to do next, Fate from Amouage. And I might put it down on the floor. Oh dear. <sighs> Not that one. Interlude, here we go. Right. So, we're going to go. Let's take the watch off. We've got more space on the arm then. Right, I didn't put any perfume on my arms today, so. Interlude Woman is going on my left wrist, okay? I might regret this. Uh, 
Um, John says, yeah, you wouldn't say minty, but it's possible. Jasanne says you won't regret it. It's definitely minty. It's totally minty. It's probably not a listed note, but sometimes the things, the way the aroma chemicals meet together and play, they can send out something that's not even supposed to be there. And I would 100% say that the main thing I get from this right now is mint. But not like a really natural mint leaf that you would find in the garden, rather a box of menthol cigarettes or even a chewing gum. Um, it's actually quite nice. I'm nervous of what's going to happen with it. I've got some pitching woo. Yeah, I have got my two samples from One Way Bridge here. Um, so we'll talk about those in just a sec. I have tried them before, but we'll try them again. I have to say, yeah, the, ran the random kiwi, <laughs> the random kiwi, she is, uh, she's a genius. I can't believe the stuff she creates. Well, interlude woman. Yeah, I, it's like um, a minty ice and sugar now, or, my, or minty white chocolate. Like quite smooth, icy cold. When I was younger, you used to mix up ice and sugar. I think, what do, what do you call it in America? Powdered sugar? Um, that really powdery sugar. You used to mix that with water and then just add some drops of peppermint essence to make uh, icing to go on cupcakes or whatever. And sometimes, because we'd get home from school and mum wouldn't get home from work for maybe an hour and a half, two hours. And if I had a sweet craving and there wasn't anything else in the house, I'd make this icing sugar mint fondant up just to eat it. <laughs> And it's reminded me of that, although it's changing. It's, I'm, I feel like I'm getting a hint of tobacco from it. John says, oh yes, we did that at school. It was horrific. No, it's so good. If we're talking about the ice and sugar. Um, <laughs> that you, you meant, when, I, when you said random kiwi, you meant the random kiwi fragrance, not that in these is a random kiwi. Okay. And I and I made you, I kind of twisted your words and made you call Elise a random kiwi. She's a random kiwi. She's a, a little firecracker of a random kiwi. A tiki girl says, I'm late. What fragments are we talking about? It is Interlude Woman. Thank you, Disan. Um, yeah, so it's less... On that, I was I was thinking sweets and things really, wasn't I there? Um, it's now going more in a, I, I feel, it's, do you know what? It's even, it's making me think a little bit of Hush Hush. It's not the same or anything, but it's got some similar elements to it in that it's sort of musky, that mintiness that Hush Hush came out, uh, Hush Hush came out with. Um, Hush Hush had a bit of a minty note. There was, there was no mint in it. And just the way that everything interacted gave it at the beginning a little bit of a minty hit. It's reminded me of Hush Hush a little bit because that also had a little bit of tobacco in it, and I feel like I'm getting a little bit of tobacco from this. Um, it's really quite nice. So I'm so glad I retested this because honestly, I, I, I think the first time I just thought oh, this is a bit much, and I didn't really pay too much attention. Uh, I don't know what's in it. I have no clue. Could I guess any notes? I mean, obviously it's not going to have mint as a note. So it's probably got some sort of resin that can smell minty or even could it have eucalyptus in it? Or elemi, elemi, elemi. It's very nice though. So it smells a little bit resinous, a little bit, touch of tobacco, it does smell minty, um, balmy, quite smooth. Oh, there's 4,000 notes. <laughs> I don't feel like I get any floral from it or anything fruity. If there's any floral, it would be something like iris. It's not really like a floral smell. It does smell like flowers to me. 
So yeah, musk, resins, that sort of thing, I'm guessing. Really nice. I am, um, I've got probably a spray or two left in there. John, do you own this one? Do you love this one? Tell us what you think. Um, yeah, what are your thoughts on it? This angle's all wrong. I need to, let me try and play with it. It's because I moved back. Let me just bend. Hang on. Don't think that really helps. Sorry, I'm a dick. Um, it's because I moved back. I need to sit on something to sort of lift, lift me up a little bit. Anyway, it doesn't really matter, does it? So, yeah, actually, quite like that. Let's talk about the other amber wash, and then we'll go on to the two one-way bridges. Oh, I lost it. I was sitting on it. I was like, what have I done with it? I was sitting on it. I think I've <coughs> fallen down. Okay, we'll find amber wash fate in a minute. Let's do one-way bridge, pitching, woo. Um, uh, John says it's a nonsensical fruity resinous one. It's very weird, a bit smoky. Never wear it on a hot day or spray more than twice. Um, yeah, so far so good. So up here we go with Pitching Woo. You can't really get this um, anymore. It was a bit of a limited edition that Elise did for One Way Bridge Perfumes. I remember reading about it. I was intrigued, but because everyone was describing it as a peachy fragrance, a peach cobbler, peach dessert, I thought I'm not really into peachy stuff, so I wasn't too worried. Um, it is really delicious. <laughs> and John says, I might be a fan of this one and bought the last bottle ever made. I remember you said that. Um, it does smell, it definitely smells fruity with a little tartness, whether it's peach, because I think Elise hasn't released the notes, um, could be apricot, but definitely a fruitiness that's got a tartiness and it kind of it leans that orangey pink, plumpy fruit type smell. With a cream, like a not too sweet, slightly vanilla cream so a chantilly cream which is just a cream that's got a little bit of vanilla pod mixed in with it i think um maybe some spice mix of warm spices dessert type spices that you use in baking and yeah we both said um me and john when we were talking about it that we got something like a humbug smell like a sweet minty scent from it I'm not getting that right now, but I might have just had a mint overload from the interlude woman. Um, that might come through a little bit later. But basically, it's a very delicately done gourmand. So sometimes when you smell a gourmand, it smells very blatant and kind of like flat, like, like you are sniffing a dessert, but you've got your face in the bowl, nothing changes, it's just linear. Very sweet, very rich, stays the same, not very nuanced, not very delicate. Pitching Woo is very delicate, very nuanced, and uh, has, has, is a gourmand with a very light and airy touch to it. So it's the kind of gourmand that I could really wear and enjoy and feel like I'm wearing a very good perfume. Whereas I think sometimes when I wear a full on gourmand, it doesn't feel very sophisticated. It doesn't feel like a classic perfume because it's just, it just smells like dessert. This smells like still like it's been made properly, like a proper perfume, but it does definitely lean quite gourmand without going too sweet. So she's very much managed to balance out the sweetness here. I don't know how she's done it. Maybe there's some things in here that are not like that, are a bit savoury and that kind of like counteract the sweetness. It's like when you add salt to something sweet and you get a whole new thing. It's a very addictive smelling, really, really nice. So yeah, that's Pitching Woo from One Way Bridge. <coughs> John says, yeah, it's not a, sti a horrific, sticky, go sticky, goopy, sweet bomb. It's a perfume. Yeah, it's definitely a, and a very fine perfume at that. It's a proper perfume. So yeah, it's a gorgeous scent. It really is. 
Then we have, uh, this one's called Amour from One Way Bridge. That's already got something on it. Um, I will spray this one on paper because this is a shocker. <laughs> I, rem I can't remember what, what, what it smells like. I, obviously, I'm not about to be reminded. I just remember being shocked. So let's see. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, okay, so I remember this. It's great. It's a grape fragrance, but I get like a really strong fecal smell from it. Um, I thought it was an oud fragrance. It's definitely dirty. It's literally like walking down uh, through the country lanes and they are muck spreading in the fields. Not just in that field there, but also in that field there. They are muck spreading. But you've got some grape juice. <laughs> it's, that's the opening. It definitely does change though. But it is quite... Is it an oud fragrance, John? Or do you know where this sort of like barnyardy type of scent comes from? It's just bizarre because you've got this really pleasant, grapey smell. Uh, Jim says that's what I smell with Vinny Tahiti. See, I don't get that at all. Like this is this is really dirty. <laughs> Vinny Tahiti. It's an unusual. It's not an obvious vanilla scent, but I didn't find it dirty. Um, John says I think sweaty wine soaked orgy. Yeah. <laughs> It's the musk. Um, what musk though? Is it an animal musk? Because it's not like a, a clean aroma chemical musk. And the, um, I know uh, she wouldn't use real animal products, but I wonder if she's got a, um, whether it's civet, castorium, uh, synthetic, or a mixture of those sort of things. Because I can't really pick anything specific out. To me, I, I would have guessed oud. I would have guessed a really dirty oud. It's at least its own made mask. It will be vegan, yeah. Um, it does definitely calm down. That dirty note calms down. It's already much more palatable. But I wouldn't go out like this right now. I would feel like maybe I'm incontinent from the rear end and I've gone out in a dirty nappy. <laughs> I am almost incontinent from the rear end but not quite. I've got it under control. <laughs> <coughs> it definitely improves but yeah I think we'll, we'll leave that one now and I've tried to find the try and find fate which I must have dropped down here. Um, here we go right fate it's definitely going on skin this is so good this one. Um, go on this hand now so i remember seeing a bottle of fate back in the days when i first started uh, smelling niche fragrances very early doors in my niche fragrance journey in london somewhere was this shiny bottle of fate because it's got this like multi-colored almost um what's the word not hieroglyphic <laughs> hieroglyphic we know when things change in the light. It's not hieroglyphic, probably begins with a high. Um, holographic, almost holographic bottle. It's stunning. So I was drawn to this bottle and I remember, I think I only sniffed it from the lid probably. Rainbow iridescent, yeah, iridescent, yeah. Um, I think I only sniffed it from the lid and I was like, Oh, that's old fashioned, it's really old fashioned smelling, like this is not for me. And I was fully in my gourmand era, I think at this point, or thereabouts. Um, and then, um, never smelt it again, until John sent me a sample. So, uh, Fate, I think, I, is, it, is there a man and a woman one? I take it this is Fate Woman. Uh, definitely smells vintage and a bit old fashioned. I can't remember the notes, but it's definitely a, like a vintage smelling floral. That's musky. It's got a little sharpness. It wouldn't surprise me if there's a touch of aldehyde. I don't think it was a listed note, but I f just feel like there's that sharp sort of fizzy touch of aldehyde. It's almost a bit like hairspray. 
Um, I'm assuming it's Jasmine. Jasmine mask, some spices. The dry down was lovely. Um, very old fashioned, but not like Chanel number no. five, not quite that aldehydical, that old fashioned smelling. Very, yeah, very musky. Uh, Jasmine and Narcissus musks and spices. It's really lovely. This is one of those fragrances that would make you feel very put together, very grown up. Like, I don't think I would be rocking this to Asda on the daily, you know. I think this would be when I wear my Miss Dior Le Parfum, which is another slightly old fashioned smelling fragrance. It's the same occasion I would choose that, I would choose this when I feel like I've I put my outfit together, I want to feel put together, I want to have an aura of confidence, of grown up woman, boss woman vibes, all of that kind of thing. I think fate, fate is that. Also feels like, like fate would be your shoulder pads, your red lippy, um, your big hair that's just been done, blown out at the hairdressers and you know, I don't know, maybe it's giving me 80s vibes or something of the Indian dynasty. <laughs> so, but definitely a bit vintage, more than a bit vintage, but done beautifully. I really quite enjoy that one. Uh, Claire's here, hey Claire. Um, Do Sansa's Fate Woman is an amouage interpretation of vintage opium pour femme from 77. Oh, I didn't know that. Jim says my mother wore that, which I loved at the time. Uh, John says it's such a special one. It's going for the likes of three to five hundred pounds now. I've got mine off someone who clearly didn't know what they had. Oh, is it discontinued then? Yeah, it's it's a beautiful, beautiful fragrance. It does feel like of a time, and not really that far back in time, but it definitely feels a bit vintage. Oh, but lovely. I really like that. So. Probably my favourites that John sent me would be the Fate and the Mio Fushini Violet one. But the, yeah, the one with Ridge Pitching Woo is, is really beautiful. Not quite my thing. Like, I don't feel like I need to chase a bottle of Pitching Woo. But I think it's it, the way that it's been done is really lovely. Um, <coughs> sorry. Sorry. Um, now I do have some more samples I think I'll just do these samples and then I will call it quits because I need to rest my voice so I have got here so this is how they arrived these are fragrances from a brand called Puente spelled P-U-E-N-T-E -E, and I ordered these because I saw a, an Instagram post talking about one called Iris Do, and I was like, oh, that sounds really nice. And so I ordered the sample set. The sample set was about £30, and there's four samples in here. Um, there are some cards with notes. There's one called Medusa, Iris Do, and Vesper, Vespertine. Vespertine. And then the other one is called Eau de Fougere. There's not a card for that one. Um, I think we should get Eau de Fougere out of the way because that's my least favourite. Then it's just not my... Fougere's are not my thing anyway. Um, so yeah, the, the samples are actually quite, you know, decent size. I've sprayed this one a few times, but... So, we'll start with the Eau de Fougere, which is an animalic Fougere. I haven't looked up the notes but I can tell for, for sure there's an animalic note or two in here. Um, potentially even real animalics because there is actually a real animalic in one of the other ones, I think. Yeah. It doesn't smell as animalic as I remember. <laughs> That's so funny. Maybe my nose is broken. So don't take me up, you know. I don't think I'm operating on all cylinders right now. The first time I smelt this, it smelt really animalic. I would have said there's maybe castorium, severe, a mixture of the two or something else really animalic. 
today I get lavender, I get peppery herbal lavender, citruses, green, bracing fougere type scent. But my nose is not finding that animalic note that I was absolutely so sure I smelt the other day. So I might have to follow this up with an Instagram post when, when I know that I'm my nose is working properly. But eau de fougere at the moment, I really pick up a lavender here, which I didn't pick up before, but being a fougere, it's bound to be there, isn't it? So anyway, I won't spend up too much time on that because as I said, it's not my favorite. So my favorites are, there's one here that if Valentina's still here, I think she would be interested in because she is a tuberose lover. And this one's called Vespertine. Vespertine, that's this one here. <clears throat> Funny Malik. <laughs> um, it would be a nice one with something naughty in it. Ah, Valentina is still here. Right, so Vespertine is a tuberose fragrance. Let me see. I'll give you the notes. I mean, to me, I really smell. Let me, let me spray it. Actually, I'm going to put this one on skin because it is it's quite a beautiful scent, actually. Even though I'm not the biggest tuberose lover. And I love I love white floral, but I find tuberose is always a bit too much or sometimes a little bit green. John would love, I think you'd love this, John. This is a full-on proper tuberose. Okay, um, so let's read you what they say. Creamy and voluptuous tuberose absolute is supported by jasmine, ylang-ylang and orange blossom. A touch of narcissus accents the bouquet. At its base, sandalwood and soft amber notes, frolic with cashmere a velvet, velvety white musk. Uh, John, I definitely like cashmere. Um, floral, fruity green, and I think we've already done all the notes. I find this very tuberose forward. So even though you've got these other florals, it's very tuberosey. Definitely green with this powdery, powdery woodsy feel. Certainly at the start, but very voluptuous was fat full petals tuberose petals it's the tuberose of madonna's truth or dare fracar carnal flower it is that kind of tuberose john says yes cashmere can be a killer if it's hefty and too peppery liz says if you're not well you probably won't be smelling things 100 percent you might even love nova if you smelled it today i don't think i'm that ill <laughs> liz i really don't um Honestly, this is really beautiful. It has it's a slight woodiness, a slight powdery woodiness cutting through the heady floral. Um, Valentina says, not like natural tuberose then. Well, I mean, it has, it says it's got real tuberose in it. It's got tuberose absolute. So, um, but it is very full on tuberose like Fracar, carnal flower. So if you, if I recognise that tuberose from those fragrances, whereas if I think of my joyous tuberose from Guerlain, it doesn't really remind me of that. Which is probably why I love the Guerlain because it's not really that tuberosey. Um, yeah, it does feel a little peppery. Actually, John, they say that whether that is the cashmere, and I don't know. And a little bit green, like a tiny bit green, which could be the narcissus, which can be, um, and also tuberose can be a bit green, can't it? I do think this is lovely. It sticks around really well on the skin. It's a little musky. It's not, it's not particularly dirty. I don't find it indolic, despite all of those white florals. But then I, I read a lot of reviews where people say things are indolic and I don't get anything dirty from a lot of fragrances people call indolic so maybe I can't be trusted on that it's it's heady though it's definitely heady um, Claire says Nova would burn through my blocked nose uh, this says what about Nui de Tuberose I can't remember if I've tried that one Valentina says, carnal flower is a little flower to me. Fracas is big, old school. Hello, I am here, kind of scent. I think I just block them all into one and I just smell it. I smell tuberose and they're like, 
lock them all into one. I don't know any of those fragrances well because the tuberose is not my scent, so I've never owned them. Um, but when I smell the tuberose in this, it reminds me of those those kind of tuberose fragrances, even though <laughs> you're saying they're all different. But you know what I mean, I think. Um, Vespertine, I think, is really nice. Uh, not quite because I'm not a tuberose lover. I wouldn't, I mean, I don't feel the need to buy it, but I do think it's really beautifully done. And it, <clears throat> Let's do Medusa. Medusa is lovely. No, we've got fate there. We're going to do Medusa on this arm. I have worn this. I found it a little bit quiet wearing it. It's not to start with, but I don't know that it had a lot of strength on me. Now this is the one that has a real animalic in it. I think it was, is it Civet or one of, it's one of the animalics. So I actually ended up chatting to the perfumer because I bought the sample set. I had the sample set and then he got in touch and said, would you like a sample set if you fancy, you know, if you fancy doing a review? And I said, oh, I've actually already bought, <laughs> really bought the sample set. Um, but I did get to ask him a couple of questions. And he told me that Medusa has a real animal, not Castorium, what's the other, is it? Oh, I don't know what it was now. But it does have a real anima, animal note in it, so an animal ingredient, so it's definitely not vegan. And I get that from Medusa. I do get a slightly dirtiness. Hello, Rich Mitch. Good to have you here. Um, so, yeah, Medusa. I think I get orange blossom the most from it. We have jasmine, rose, orange blossom. Are bound by the rich earthy notes of orris root, vetiver and oak moss. Artisan grade natural civet tincture. Softens the perfume, providing a warm base of sensual elegance. Spi floral, musky, spicy, earthy. So I, I get orange blossom the most from it. Definitely does what it says in terms of grounded and slightly dirty. Oh, there goes the light. Sorry about that. Very musky feel to it. I do think this one's really nice, but I'm not sure the performance is, was great on me. But I mean, it is only a little sample, and as you can see, I can't have used that much. So maybe I need to wear it more, like I mean, a higher dose, shall we say, because I really like this one. It's a very sexy, attractive, white, floral, musky scent. So it's my, that's my bag, you know, that's my cup of tea. So I really like that one. And the Iris do, I saved till last because it's very much a paradox to me. Um, there's some things about it that I really love and then there's something about it that sort of disappoints me. So I actually think, and I'm not going to put it on paper, I'm going to put it on my skin because it's so, it is stunningly beautiful. Um, but there's just something that kind of ruins it for me, sadly. Let me just let that settle and I'll read you some stuff. Oh. Uh, John, Civic Wow, is it very warm and moist? Yeah, I would say it probably is, yeah. Right then, Iris do. Elegant Iris Root is adorned with sweet notes of Ylang Ylang, Mimosa, Franchi Penny. The rich accord is brightened with the essence of geranium laced with a touch of jasmine and warmed with comforting notes of cedar, sandalwood, tonka bean and vanilla. Powdery, woody, floral, earthy. So this one is a beautiful iris. It's a little peppery and woody, a little bit sweet. Those other florals like surround it but they're not they don't overtake they're really everything's all very delicate everything plays together it feels like it's made of the most 
beautiful materials and they dosed just beautifully. But I do smell some, what I call Isoe Super, but actually the perfumer has confirmed it's called it's Sylvamba, which is basically an Isoe Super type molecule. It's very, very similar to Isoe Super. I smell it straight away, but not too much. I can just, it mingles with everything. It just adds a peppery, dry, woody, powdery, cedar-like feel to the composition, but it doesn't take over it to start with. It is honestly so bloody good to start with. And other people will love it all the way through. But for me, the Sylvamba, so the Isoe, on my skin it just sort of takes over very quickly so within 20 minutes I mostly feel like I'm wearing eccentric molecules one which is such a shame I just seem to I don't know if it's my nose loses all of those beautiful materials all of that lovely work it feels like the ISOE kind of just takes over in my nostrils and I don't dislike ISOE. I actually, I, I had Molecule One. I wore it quite a lot. It was my, it probably still is my most complimented fragrance. But I think I'm just done with it, you know. So that's just a personal thing. Um, uh, the the perfumer, I think his name is Elias. Uh, he said on on his skin, he doesn't get so much of that Sylvamber, that ISOE type smell. He gets more of the Tonka coming through. Um, but for me, whether it's my skin and my perception, maybe I'm hypersensitive now to ISOE, it does start to feel. It starts to feel like it's 80, 85% ISOE and just a little hint of those beautiful materials that were there at the beginning. And he said he hasn't dosed it that high at all, but it's just, it's quite a strong version of an ISO E though, apparently. So um, I think if you're not bothered by it, if you, if you like ISO E Super and you love Iris fragrances, it's definitely still worth checking out. I think the perfumer is really skilled because these perfumes are beautiful. They smell like they've been made with time and care and they smell like they're made of really nice materials. Um, he's definitely using some gorgeous naturals, you can absolutely tell. It's just, for me, I'm just sort of sad about the Iris Dew because it started off so well. And the first time I smelled it, I was like, oh my God! You know, as in a way, it was a good thing because it saved me, I don't know how much they are, they're, they're not cheap, two, 200 plus pounds a bottle. And so, but I, I mean, at the moment still, I could smell gorgeous Iris perfume. Valentina says, oh no, I know the feeling when those chemicals ruin everything. That's a shame I just pick out what we hate. I think that's right, John. I think when you don't like something, it, it sort of overwhelms you. Like, you can't help but focus on it in a way. Mm. Valentina says, heaven can wait and new bougies are full of those amber woods and it kills them for me. Oh, that's a shame. Gilded bougie bougies. Is that um, Pia, Pia's brand? Uh, I've I've seen seen some posts from Pia mentioning bougie, so I think that must be Pia Pia's brand. Uh, John says yes. Uh, Heaven can wait has been destroyed by it, hasn't it? They've ruined. Oh really? They've ruined Frederick Mouth. I wasn't expecting that from John Claudella. Claude mm. Oh. All right. I'm going to pour a drink, chat amongst yourselves, and I'll probably bugger off in a sec. Done eighty four minutes. <coughs> considering I'm not well someone needs to give me a like you need to like the stream because that will make me feel better <laughs> oh dear look at that I've got a backup gin don't, don't panic panic not I've got backup gin I've got a Bombay Sapphire bottle but this will be my last drink Karine says, oh, I really liked Heaven Can Wait. John says, I like the clothes, Karine, but something very sharp and headachey in there. I will definitely try and try it. I mean, I'm sure I'll try it at some point. 
but I'm not a big fan of clove heavy fragrances anyway. I need clove to be quite subtle in a perfume for me to like it. Um, carnation and clove, I find them sort of very, very similar. And I just, I don't mind, I don't mind them, but I just need them to not be the main focus. So I, I had a feeling that Heaven Can Wait wouldn't be quite for me. Valentina says, I tested Heaven Can Wait in the shop, did not smell those amber woods, and then I ordered a travel size, and now I can't wait to move it on. Oh dear. Uh, Karine says, not headachey for me, I wear it to go to bed. <laughs> and you wear it to bed and heaven can wait till morning. <laughs> <coughs> I know Frederick Mauer seemed to have gone a little bit in that direction because obviously there was that, I'm still not smelt it, I don't know if I smelt it, that one, um, What's the one that Rich Mitch hates? What's the one Rich Mitch did the best review of? Not Synthetic Jungle, it was it was the next one, I think, after that. Um, I might have smelled it from a, I might have picked up a bottle, and, Uncut Gem, that's the one, thanks Disa. I might have picked up a bottle and smelled it from the lid, but I already, like, I know. There's no point, there's no point me even spraying it on a bit of paper, it's just, it's not gonna work for me. Okay, I think it's time for me to go. Thank you so much for joining me and thank you, thank you for joining the stream. It's been nice. I've enjoyed smelling these perfumes, so thank you to John and Lizzie for sending them. And Valentina will message me, not, not tonight. <laughs> I'll message you, Valentina, because I want to send you some, uh, I'm sure, I, I'll double check I've still got it, I'm pretty sure I have. I want to send you some of this iris. And you can send me something if you want, if you if you insist, I'll smell something of yours. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I just, I need to, the thing is, I, I get all these samples right, and, the, and if I keep hold of them, then they get built up, and I can't remember what was what, and they'll get built up in like um, plates around the house, bowls around the house, and I feel overwhelmed, and I don't know what to do, I forget what I've got, what, and, and I sometimes just think, I just need to like pick them all up and put them in a uh, envelope and send them to someone. <laughs> um, <clears throat> anyhow, so that, and then so I tell people don't like, don't send me anything for a while because I'm I'm just feeling a bit overwhelmed. But I am a bit more on a um, bit more on a, an exploring thing at the moment. So but what I'm gonna try and do is move samples on quickly, not just hang on to them. If I want to re-smell them at some point in the future, I'll have to just hunt them down. But if, you know, I think we just, I just need to let things go, otherwise I start to get overwhelmed. And they dry out, if they're in the plastic things, they, they dry out. Or they go like, they get that funny smell. Some of those plastic atomizers start to smell fishy, which is gross. Or the scent just goes right off inside them and you get that really dry, weird, celery smell. <laughs> um, it's, not, it's not good. So yeah, I think what I need to do is just, uh, grab them all together. I'm keeping the Puentes for a while because I quite like those, like the Iris Do and the Medusa. I'm going to keep hold of those for a little while but um, I'll try and move stuff on anyway. I mean I'm just talking shit now and I... Um, <coughs> <coughs> Bye! <laughs>